Okay. You guys ready to get going? Yes, sir. Ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fourth Generation Sports Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, German. This is my boy, Drew. And we have a very special guest for you guys today. We have our boy, OC the G. Hey. Say what's up, OG. Hey, hey all right. Fucking right, up the mic, dude. Out the mic. Damn, dude. First I'm going to charge you for that mic. <laughs> Hey, even though that Drew paid for yeah. it. Yeah, I'm not charging. <laughs> oh, right. boy Stetson. So we're right in the middle of watching the uh, the Georgia Bama bowl game. Uh, obviously, you can see who OC is rooting for. Georgia. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, for those for those of you just listening, OC's just got uh, his his little Bama gear. Uh, I got my cat my. Uh, my 49er really gear. You. I, know, yeah. <laughs> I got my 49er gear. Uh, Drew over here, he's got his cowboy gear. Uh, you can tell who we're going to go for next weekend. Uh, this week, man, this uh, last week 18, uh, we're going to go ahead, uh, this uh, this episode, we're going to go ahead, we're going to do a recap. Uh, we're going to go over the coaches' vacancies, uh, so what uh, jobs are open out in the NFL. Uh, we're going to go over uh, OC's boy, Brian Flores. Ex boy. Ex boy now apparently, uh, and then we're gonna take a look at the uh, playoff preview for next week, and we're gonna go over our picks. All right, so you guys ready to get going? That sounds good. All right, so week eighteen, crazy week, right? So we're gonna go ahead. Uh, we're gonna go with uh, so the Chiefs and Broncos. Chiefs won twenty eight twenty four. Uh, nothing. A little bit closer game than I thought, but not much. No, nothing not much. Uh, nothing much to uh, to report <laughs> there, other than after after the game, pretty much they pretty much fired their head coach, the Broncos. Yeah. So uh, we'll talk more about that later. Cowboys and the Eagles, 51-26. Again, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. What, what needed to happen happened in that game for both teams. Uh, Cowboys needed to lay it onto the Eagles, and the Eagles needed to rest their players, and that's what they did. So kind of a, a win-win, for I think, for both teams. Yeah, really. exactly. Um, Steelers-Ravens. Steelers, 16-13. Uh, what do you, what do you think about that? Pass at the very end. Very... Very typical Big Ben like. Uh, Big Ben in the playoffs for his last his last go. Yeah, there. I don't. His last that dude ride. looks like like he's like running on fumes right now. Like some, of the, some of those throws were fucking awful. You got to see. It is your typical, you know. They're talking about. I was watching the pregame. They're just talking about like low scoring. They brought in Ray Lewis to talk about Big Ben and Terrell Suggs, and they're just talking about how those games were always physical games. Mm-hmm. It was always running. Uh, the running game was always going to come into play. Well, during Big Ben's like earlier years, obviously his arm was a big factor because he had guys like uh, obviously Antonio Brown and Heinz Ward and guys like that. Mm-hmm. But now, now it's stretched to the running game. So now it's hard nosed football. They're gonna run in between the tackles and it's gonna come down to a field goal. And which and then, so that's pretty much what happened. happened. That's, that's exactly what happened. happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jaguars, Colts, man. The Colts. Just screwing it up, dude. <laughs> uh, that uh, taboo of Carson Wentz, huh? It, it, it completely shocked me. And then, like, yeah, like you said, Carson Wentz just doing Carson Wentz things. Uh, and what I was thinking while watching the game, I, I mean, I know this is they go kind of going way back, but uh, what if uh, uh, Carson Wentz never tears his ACL that year that the Eagles won the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you think Carson Wentz had no. what it takes to no. to carry? To carry that Eagle team? Big Dick Nick carried that team to the Super Bowl. <sighs> Dude, but it's just Carson Wentz, uh, he went out there, did his thing. I mean, he his offensive line, of course, didn't help. And then they only ran the ball to Jonathan Taylor, what, 15 times? I mean, yeah. he got the best running back, in the, yards, best running no back in the league. And yeah, exactly. He only had 15 touches? Yeah, he only had 15 touches. Yards, 15 yeah. touches. Yeah. I mean, Carson Wentz was 17 for 29 for 185 yards against the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's four yards of reception. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, no touchdowns and an interception. And then, and then the interception too. It was like it was a bad interception. It was like a bad was throw. Close. He wasn't even he wasn't rushed or anything. Uh, super bad. Uh, all they had to do was just take care of business against the Jags, and they were in. But I mean, you can look back on the game against the Raiders too. Same situation. That was a win, and you're in then too. And he threw for yeah. 148 yards against the Raiders. And I mean, the Raiders defense isn't that great. Right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. And we saw that last night. Saw last night. night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean to. To only throw 148 yards at home against the Raiders in a, in a, in a not necessarily a must win, but a win and you're in situation, yeah. that's, it's sad. I mean, Carson Wentz just seems like he can't win the big in, game. And essentially a playoff game. Yeah. I mean, you kind it's of just like up. down the stretch though. Doesn't he always like just unfold? He eventually does that. Because yeah. he was fine Christmas mm-hmm. Day. He put on a show against the Cardinals, him and Jonathan Taylor. Destroyed yeah. the Cardinals. Yeah, and, and then it's a playoff team and then you go out next week and 
You fold against the Raiders, and then they won last week, right? Set them up to. No, no, that's that's the back-to-back losses to knock them out. Yeah. Lost oh, to the Raiders. Yeah, and yeah then they lost to the Raiders. The and then oh, the Raiders game was yeah. last week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well then, do they did they start to overlook the situation and just already had their foot in the door and just they thought they were gonna walk all over the Jags, which our boy Shu, by yeah, the way, shout that out to Matt. He hasn't. Uh, he told us what they haven't beat the Colts. Haven't beat the Jags in Jacksonville since like 2014 or something. Yeah, it's been a while. Really? Yeah. Mm. Something that okay. uh, can it's like be done. five. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. No, that's like seven straight now. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like the Niners Rams situation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking. Mm-hmm. McVay is three and seven. Yeah. In Shanahan. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we'll, we'll get back into that later. Uh, <laughs> next game we had. Uh, the Packers losing to the Lions 30 to 37. I think we called that. Yeah, we, pretty we pretty much called it. We knew that they were going to go ahead. They said everybody, what, second half is when they started pulling yeah, against? Right yeah. Uh, yeah, right around then. Yeah. Um, and then we had a uh, Washington football team beating the Giants. Nothing nothing big I, there <laughs> other, other than the I Giants. Don't even, I don't, Former I, Georgia Bulldog, Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's came in, yeah. Footballs out of his hand. <laughs> uh, we had. Uh, Tennessee uh, hanging on against uh, the, the Texans, 28-25. Game's a little closer than I thought it would be. Te- uh, yeah, it's, it's a little closer than I thought it would be. But, I mean, the Texans, I mean, if you, if you think about it, those were one of the teams that were eventually, essentially the players are playing for their jobs, right? Mm-hmm. They're playing, you know, they want to look good on film. They still want to get paid the next season. The coaches are still playing for their job or still coaching for their jobs. So, you know, they have, they have something to play for, not necessarily that just going out there and just throwing the game. Um, but Tennessee, now that's something to play for. They need Tennessee, to they get seed. the number one seed. They get Derrick Henry back. Hopefully, he comes back healthy. They get another week to rest that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about Tennessee going into the playoffs? Uh, well, see. just to go back on the game, um, I thought that would be close, just because the Texans had beaten the Titans earlier in the season, and that yeah. AFC South is we saw it yesterday with the Jags. They just that's come awesome. in, you. It's such a toss up whenever the, the 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 divisional games are just something for most divisions or some you see it with the Niners mm-hmm. around just tough games. Yeah. Dolphins and Patriots came down to the wire again. It's just something about division games that you know the opponent so well mm-hmm. and you study them so much that like you're not you're hardly ever gonna blow out a team unless a resting guy or someone yeah. doesn't have a quarterback, but like you said, guys are fighting for their jobs, trying to set themselves up for next mm-hmm. season, so um, the Titans, yeah. So oh, you guys are talking about the number one seed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, they get only one team gets the buy, right? Yep. Yep. They're the only team with the buy, and they'll the play AFC. the lowest seed available, right? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be cool to see them to see how they play now. The way they got um, AJ Brown playing, and then let's wait to see how they get uh, with um, with Derrick Derek Henry back, and then Julio Jones scored his first touchdown with Tennessee. Yeah, kind of upsetting <laughs> because he was on my bench for like uh, 14 weeks in fantasy football. Yeah, dude. It's, I mean, older receivers, I mean, you kind of see it with him and then A.J. Brown. Or not A.J. Brown, um, A.J. Green. You know, they're, they're older receivers. They're not going to put up the numbers that they used to mm-hmm. put up. So I think it's just that expectations were too high for Julio uh, yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, he's on his decline. Yeah, he's on his decline. But uh, the good thing is that Tennessee has other weapons that they can go oh, to. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, next game, we have um, the Browns beating the, the, the Bengals. Uh, nothing much to report there. What do you guys think about that one? Well, I picked the Bengals, and you picked the Browns. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you know better than me, I guess. It's just they committed. This morning I saw that they committed to, what, Baker is their guy for next season? And it's just, I don't know about that. It's, just, it's the constant, like, you know he's he's only gonna be able to do so much for you, and but, there's really a Nick Chubb show there. Uh, yeah, I understand that, but outside of Baker, who else? Who are they gonna go after? What what the boy Nick Mullins is there, right? Nick Mullins is there, but I mean, yeah, he puts up yards, but he's not. <laughs> he's, he's always he's turning guy. the ball over every I mean, other throw. Just, the Browns are just like agreeing to okay with an average quarterback next year. That that roster is so good though. Like defensively, those DBs that they have, Denzel Ward. Uh, the, they had Johnny Johnson, but he got hurt. Mm-hmm. But uh, they had other. They, they just drafted another kid. They had a side, the opposite side from Denzel Ward. Their corners are really good, but um, they have Clowney, right? They have Miles yeah. Garrett. Yep. Clowney's a free agent, though. And Clowney's a free agent. But it's know. just like 
you surround well, just that. Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward just having having a DB like that and having having an interior D lineman like that like that that's something that you can build your defense around. Greg right? Newsom, Greg Newsom, Greg he's, Newsom's a, he's a rookie yeah. that came out of uh, Northwestern. I remember, and he he had a good game against the Packers a couple weeks ago. And it's just it's a real the defense is really good. Mm-hmm. Offensively, obviously you have Chubb. That offensive line is yeah, still most of them are coming back. Good. Yeah, but it's just like what. Baker's only gonna take he, you so he far. ties he ties your hand. He kinda handcuffs you. He's kinda like another like another Jerry Goff, Jimmy Garoppolo, mm-hmm. where you can only do so much with them. But then you look at other options around the league and then young talent that's coming into the draft, there's not much else, no. right? No. Yeah. It's really I mean not much quarterback wise coming in. I mean you kinda I mean, essentially you kinda gotta play the cards that you're dealt with, right? Yeah. And, and that's pretty much what the Browns are doing. Uh moving on from that, the Vikings, Brewers, I mean uh, the Vikings beat uh, the Bears 31-17. Not much there. Other last than one for Zimmer. Last, both, last both coaches, right? Both coaches. Yeah, both, both coaches. coaches. <laughs> have, both wake up on the the next day. Um, but you can tell it was a long time coming uh, for both those organizations. Well, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, we have the Bills beating the Jaguars 27-10. to Nothing much there other than the Bills are, are starting to heat up going into the playoffs. They have back-to-back wins. Uh, they got uh, the Pats next week, a team that they've mm-hmm. already they've lost to and then they beat. So we'll see, we'll see how that fun. goes. It's it's gonna be fun. <laughs> um, I like Josh Allen. I know you guys you guys have your opinions about him, but I hope I think he's cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's cool. It's I not hope his fault. So, Fresno State didn't choose, choose him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big game from the yesterday though, uh, one of the, or one of the bigger games from yesterday, the 49ers and the Rams. Huge game for the Niners, right? With Kyle coming up big, uh, going down down to LA, beating the Rams, coming back from a 17 point def- uh, deficit, uh, 14 point de- deficit at halftime, and came back to win 27 24 in overtime. What do you think? I'll give Jimmy G this much credit, just just a little bit. I think I mean he came up pretty clutch in the second half. Uh, that was pretty impressive. That last drive, the last couple drives. Yeah, but I give I give more credit to Debo. I think I mean. Really, if you remove Debo from that game yesterday, mm-hmm. what what do you got? Because Debo rushes for a touchdown. Yeah. Debo throws a touchdown. Yeah. And then that game tying touchdown. You look at that defense; they were so concerned about where Debo was going. Yeah. He's double covered, and that one guy blows the coverage in the zone, and that's where they score the touchdown. Yeah, and to add to that, um, the defense is so preoccupied with what Debo is doing mm-hmm. that that opens up the run game and everybody else gets involved because mm-hmm. everyone's so preoccupied with the motion. Yeah, talk closer. Oh, yeah. uh, everyone gets so preoccupied there with the go. motion and and where he's at on the field yeah. that they kind of you know forget about uh, Elijah Mitchell, right? Yeah. Or they forget about George Kittle, and mm-hmm. they're just more there's more space for everyone else yeah. to mm-hmm. to work. Uh, yeah, you know, and I'll second that too. Like that's exactly what happened. And I'll go one step further. And as uh, the offensive lineman, uh, the offensive line for the 49ers played really uh, well, played really well. Uh, especially in that second half. Uh, there was a drive. I think they went to the drive to go uh, score the touchdown right before Debo threw the touchdown pass. That drive was run, 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 run. run. Uh, and they pretty much just drove it down uh, the Rams' throat. And, the, and you can tell. You can tell the Rams were starting to get frustrated, especially you know, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you can't do what, what makes you you, it, 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 makes, it, it frustrates you mm-hmm. trying, trying to beat a team with your secondary skills. Uh, and that's exactly what Kyle Shanahan did so well was, okay, we didn't have time. We're down 17-3. to three. Let's make some adjustments. And they made their adjustments. Oh, completely outcoached Sean McVay. Oh yeah, and Sean McVay was just like, let's do the same thing. Um, the defensive, it, the defensive front for the 49ers took out the running game completely. I don't understand why they ran the ball so much. The Rams ran the ball 27 times. The Rams have the 25th best running offense in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's terrible. And the the Niners have the seventh best defense of uh, a run defense. Uh-huh. Why? Why do you run the ball that many times? Matthew yeah. Matthew Stafford is fourth in the league in yards. Mm-hmm. Why? Why are you taking the ball out of his hands? He didn't play great, but I mean, still, I would rather him throw the ball than try to run twenty seven times against a quality defense. No, yeah, I get that, but uh, also with the pass rush that the Niners had going on, I mean, and they weren't even blitzing that often. I think they only times. they only blitz a couple of times. Like most of those sacks mm-hmm. came off of just a four man rush. 
Uh, and then one sack uh, when Fred Warner got back there, it was on the third and on the third and eight. Mm-hmm. So, so them passing the ball so many times uh, against that front because the 49ers, they can't their DBs can't cover man to man, and it showed. And that's what's scary about next week too with mm-hmm. the receivers that the Cowboys have. Uh, but for the Rams, I think like you said, what's going to hurt them in the long run is that they can't run the ball. Yeah. Well, so to chime in on that, mm. maybe the Rams are just trying to set up a run game to try to see if they could get anything going so they can see what works for next week. Exactly. Since, since you're yeah. getting, they they, kinda, they already knew they were in the playoffs. Yeah. And then maybe they looked up at the scoreboard in the second half and saw Seattle was beating Arizona and they kind of yeah. just took their foot off the gas a little bit. You, I mean, that's it, it could, could go. Oh, yeah. That's just one theory. I'm not saying that's what happened, mm-hmm. but... That's just one theory I was I thinking mean, about. I mean, yeah, I was watching that game. In the first quarter, they were up 17-0, and then the Wait. 49ers were deflated. Like, mm-hmm. it was like it looked like it was over. Like, I was watching it. My family and I were watching it, and we were like, well, that sucks. Like, I thought done. it was over. Yeah, I it was, it was like, over. we're yeah. done. Like, the, the way the energy that the Rams were playing with, like, I thought, okay, they're going to they're gonna probably uh, slam their foot on our throats, and it's going to be over. But then the Niners came back. They kicked the field goal right before half, and then the rest was history. And then, and then just the Niners completely outplay them in the second half, which um, I get what you're saying about them trying to maybe set up the run. Let's see what we got <clears throat> going on for next well, week. Cam Akers finally came back yesterday after tearing his uh, Achilles That's in right, yeah. late July, mm-hmm. early August, mm-hmm. which is kind of crazy to think about. Like, right. Like, a guy coming back <laughs> in the same season. Quick. The yeah, same season from quick. the torn Achilles. Yeah, so. Because that's like, what took down, uh, I remember uh, Kobe had that injury, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Clay Thompson just got Clay Thompson for yeah. You know, so that's that's a yeah, that's a definitely so a serious injury. Um, um one stat that I seen was it Sean McVay was forty five and or forty four or forty five and zero going into the halftime with the lead. This was the and first yesterday this was, was the first, his first loss. Yeah, his first when, loss when leading at the at mm-hmm. the half. But if there's a team that's gonna beat him, we we talked about earlier in the year. Yeah, the Niners just, just have his number. Yeah, and like we're talking about like those divisional games, how important those divisional games is. Those coaches match up twice a year. They they probably have their number. They probably know what they're going to do. And then Sean McVay and Shanahan, they both used to work together, right? Mm-hmm. At a couple of different organizations. So I mean, he probably just knows what he's going to do. Or Shanahan just he's got he's got McVay's number. I mean, he's seven and three against Sean McVay. Yeah, and this is like the sixth straight win, I think. Uh, six. six straight, yeah, yeah. six straight. Mm-hmm. Because you got both this year, both last both. year, yeah, and then and the then last one. The so three four, years in a three row. Three years in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, very interesting. Uh, are you worried at all about the Rams going into the playoffs? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If they can't establish a run game, the run game is big, and then we we see the Cardinals. That that's who they're matched up with, right? Yeah, yeah. The Cardinals, that uh, defensive front, look really good against Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, and then well, we we've established how important the the run game is in the playoffs. Like, look at the Bucks last year and how Leonard Fournette just turned it on uh, there at the tail end of the season and how big he was for them in the national champion or in that uh, NFC uh, championship and in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So that was huge. Um, uh, you worried at all about the Niners going into the playoffs? Am I wor- huh? I'm worried about Debo. Honestly, that's. And He's but a that, that, yeah. that that opens up a huge possibility because I was thinking, okay, we're gonna have Trayvon Diggs cover Debo, but then I'm like, maybe that's not the best person to cover Debo because Trayvon Diggs has gave up the most yards as a corner this year. So well, like he's a wild card, right? So I'm, I'm thinking he'll come up either with a huge play. Yeah, or... <laughs> I mean that almost leads me to believe maybe he should make a transition into safety. Um, I don't know, man. I. It's going to be a really good game. That's what I know. I, I know that the, the Cowboys are finally trying to get something together yeah. on the offense. The, they really spread out that offense really well this last weekend. The defense has been looking really good. But if we can't stop Debo, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Oh, see, so what do you think? Do you, th- you think the Niners look scary going into Hold the on, playoffs? Hold on, before he answers. <laughs> oh, he's ahead. the biggest Cowboy hater I know. So That is true. That is true. But Why just, I mean, he's, he's neutral in this situation. No, he's not. So obviously Dallas has the better offensive weapons aside from Debo, but I think that uh, San Francisco is just coming in playing with house money. Like they yeah. were basically dead. Like they weren't gonna they make were the playoffs. Water at Saints had already won. Yeah, they were down at halftime. Uh, they needed. I was flipping back between the Dolphin game and the Niner game, mm-hmm. and I saw what less than a minute left, no timeouts. I was like, oh, Jimmy G's gonna go win this. Yeah, all right. I'll do it. <laughs> all right. I don't yeah. need to watch this. And then that's and that's the crazy thing is like up until that point, 
they had that comeback had been built off of just their running game. Mm-hmm. And then Jimmy comes in and just has that mag- that magical last drive. I mean, that motherfucker looked like Peyton Manning for that last yeah, drive. Yeah, I, I saw the final Brady. drive, and I was yeah. just like, dude, he was making throws. He was making throws. Like, he was stepping for more than, for more than six <laughs> yards, too. <laughs> exactly. He was, like, he was reading the field. He was scanning. He was pushing the ball down the field. Like that big throw to uh, to Debo Samuel where, uh, where, he, gets, play, yeah. where he gets just in behind Jalen Ramsey. Like that was a big time throw, you know. He yeah. yeah he he really zipped it in there, and then Debo does his thing, gets up the field, picks up another twenty yards after the catch. I mean, he looked good, and then scored it, and then he threw that touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jimmy looked good, man. We'll see, we'll see where we go from here. It's gonna be a really good game. Man. Really good game. Very interesting game. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, the game after that was uh, we had Seattle beating the Cardinals thirty-eight to thirty. Uh, is that Russell Wilson's last game? As a Seahawk. Do you think so? I think so. I think it's 50-50. You think it's up in the air still? Yeah. What about UFC? It depends. On what? I, either he's going to be out or Pete's going to be out. One of them's gone. One's going to be on. I think both are out. I honestly do. I honestly think uh, I think Pete Carroll's going to leave. Uh, Russell, he already showed that he wanted to leave already. Uh, and I think he's going to want to go somewhere else. Um, depending on who the coaches are, uh, depending on on what the Saints decide to do, I think they're probably going to keep Sean Payton there. Uh, so I think maybe if they, if they go in on the running for him, that'll be interesting. You know, Russell Wilson with the Saints. Uh, I know a lot of people were saying the Raiders last year, but then again, I think it just it depends on who the head coach is going to be there. Uh, what do you guys think? You think Wilson to the, Ra- to the Raiders? Uh, he, that was one of the options last year. Uh, I think Raiders are, are going full in on Derek Carr do right you think now. think so? Especially after last night's yeah. win. Uh, yeah, but I, you told you said last week or two weeks ago um, Wilson to the Saints. I thought that was pretty damn good. Yeah, uh, he fits. He fits what they did with Drew Brees, and they were very successful with Drew Brees. Mm-hmm. And I feel like uh, he's going to give him the uh, Payton's going to give him the freedom that, oh, yeah. he, that he's always wanted. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that fits. Yeah. What about you? What do you think, OC? Last game there. Is he moving on? I don't think so. I think that franchise has like given him the keys, so it's like they might let him have input on who comes in. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes me think he'll stay. <coughs> but I think probably Pete Carroll's out. Uh, he's mm-hmm. one, I think he's the oldest coach in the league. He he's might be. He's like 76. Yeah, he's, he's pretty he's, old. Yeah. He still wears yeah. a Nike Air Marlux, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the dad shoes. <laughs> so he's got some fresh yeah, pairs. But I mean, he looks, he looks like, like he's 50. Yeah, he's, he's on the he's sidelines. Young, he's chewing he's, his gum. He's running yeah. around. So, the guys up. So, so do you think if... if Pete's gone. Do you think he goes somewhere else? Or do you think that's that's it? Pete, uh, I don't know. I mean, he hasn't said it. Like, I've never heard a, a comment from him saying he's done or like he's like looking like he's got one foot out the door. So I feel like he still goes somewhere. But he's always been a head coach, you know. Yeah. Even before he's not even go be some assistant. Nah, I don't think so. No, because yeah, before yeah. Seattle, he was at SC, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jammed out of there. But mm-hmm. before he went to SC, he was with the Patriots. And mm-hmm. He was with the Jets. So he's always been a head coach. Yeah. So I don't know if he's willing to take like, like a step back, you know, and just be an assistant. I don't think so, especially at that age. Yeah. I mean, who wants to step back and be an assistant? No, yeah, and I think those teams. There's teams that'll take him. I think like oh, yeah. uh, the Vikings will take him. I mean, they're looking for a new head coach, right? Yeah, yeah. They're they're really there's a few teams looking for a right? head coach. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later too. Uh, next game after that, uh, OC, the Dolphins being up on the Pats, 33-24. Uh, uh, what was your input on that? What did you see? I knew it was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen? <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the confidence. The, the, the Patriots in Miami, for whatever reason, have like, they're like, I think it was, the Dolphins are like all time in Miami against the Patriots are like 39-17. and 17. Uh-huh. That's like two out of every three they beat him. Yeah. Even uh, Tom Brady, his only like losing record in, against the team or in a stadium is against the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, in South Florida in December or January, it just messes with Bill Belichick. It's it's every year, every year, or mm-hmm. like at least <laughs> it feels like that. Um, yeah. But um, Tua, Tua and OS Mac Jones. I mean, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't do too much, but he did just enough to beat him, you know? Right. He's a game manager. That's what yeah. he did really well. So, I mean, I knew that uh, it was a lock all week for me. It was mm-hmm. Miami. Miami was going to yeah. beat the Patriots. Cause, I mean, Patriots were already locked into the playoffs, so I'm not saying they had not much to play for. I think they could have moved up depending on their seating. Uh-huh. But I just knew Miami was going to go out hard on the last game. You know, they won. They finished, what, 
They have the seven game losing streak and the seven game winning streak. They lost yeah. last week. And then they won. And then they won. And, they won. and then mm-hmm. I, I was telling you guys last week how like you get embarrassed one week in the NFL and, and then you, you come, come back. back. Yeah. 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 We got That's embarrassed last week and then they finished out strong. Yeah. Uh very interesting their situation in Miami. We'll get we'll talk about that. Um, the Saints and the Falcons. The Saints were close, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it was up to to whatever happened with the Niner Ram game, uh, and it looked like the Saints were on their way to the playoffs. But uh, I guess uh, Jimmy G had other plans. Jimmy G had other plans, right? Um, the Bucks and the Panthers, forty-one uh, seventeen. Not Ooh. much, not much there. Other than, um, do you think the Bucks kind of just made out, went out, made a statement? You know, it's just like, hey, the distractions. We're just going to put that aside. All that stuff going on with AB. It was a very typical Tom Brady game. Like I said, it, it was 17-10 to 10 at the half, and then they scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. It, yeah. But, I mean, the Panthers aren't that good, so it. I think it was just another Tom Brady game. Yeah, just Tom Brady just, went out. Just typical. There's nothing big. Uh, it was pretty cool when they went out to uh, give uh, uh, Rob his incentives. Oh yeah, uh, and I think, I, I, think, one play. I think it's a slap in the face a little bit to AD. To it's AD like, dude, this could have been you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the game of the night, man. Very interesting game. We all it's watched game of the it. Season. Uh, Raiders Chargers, man. Interesting finish. Um, what were you guys' thoughts on it? What did you think, of, uh, Drew? Uh, Big big couple of things that that came to mind right away is uh, Justin Herbert. He's he's a good quarterback. Like he can he can fucking handle the pressure. Uh, six for six on fourth downs, one hundred and six yards and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. That's pretty fucking impressive in crunch time. Um, fuck, Carr did okay. Nothing special. Threw a couple of touchdowns. No turnovers. I think that's kind of big for Carr. I think that was I think that was over. his biggest thing. That's one thing I was expecting. I was expecting that over time he's gonna fucking turn the ball over. He and it's it. just like the, the cars would go do what Carr does and turn the ball over, and he didn't. But they showed the stat right before overtime. He's in his career, he's 5-0. 5-0. Five five he, 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 he wins an yeah. OT. Like, somehow sure. he just pulls it out. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I know he got Miami, like, week two. He but I think maybe it, that's just his uh, his uh, gunslinger mentality that it kind of just uh, in, mm-hmm. in big games like that, that yeah. kind of just it pays off for him, mm-hmm. you know, in uh, most situations. Because in a lot of situations, you saw, like, there would be, there's games in, like, fourth quarters where that mentality would get him into some hot water, mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't know, I forgot what game it was last year, but when he was, like, it was, like, a tie game in the fourth quarter, and he goes to die for the end zone and then fumbles. Yeah. He gets uh, hit and fumble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, he does stuff like that, and that's what I was expecting last night. Um, but like you said, uh, Justin Herbert played awesome. He played really well. His offensive line were terrible. Oh my like, god! It was like every time he went back to go pass, uh, Crosby was right in his face. Storm Norton. That's the name of the right tackle. That sucks. <laughs> that guy. That guy got exposed <laughs> on so many that levels. That <laughs> dude's gonna come after you, that that dude. Right there, dude. Oh man! Come at me, dude. <laughs> Come Jeez, on. There's, like, <laughs> there's like 15 right tackles that could have done better than that that are uh, all backups. Jesus Christ. Yeah. In other he, words, Andrew said he can play right tackle. So basically, okay, yeah. so I could have done what he did. You you go in and you block Max Crosby. <laughs> I could have we'll done see, what we'll he see did. What and I mean, he looked like, <clears throat> he made Max Crosby look like the defensive player of the year. He did. He, he right? Did. I mean, it was like every time. Every single yeah. play, it's like, oh, here comes Max Crosby. Who's covering him? Oh, yeah, there's the right tackle. But, no, but, I mean, like you said, uh, Justin Herbert, he made some awesome throws. Like, I think there was, like, three fourth downs that they converted, and then the last play to get it into the end zone. Mm-hmm. Like, he made some, like, big-time throws. I, I mean, it's he's fourth and 20. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And somehow yeah. your safeties are halfway deep in the end zone. I just don't get exactly. it. Exactly. Cover the cut. I mean, you know he's – the ball's not going to go out of the end zone. He's going to try to play it right. in yeah. bounds, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I just I, – I remember watching that, and I'm like – why is the safety like five yards deep in the end zone? <laughs> He's like, I'm not getting beat deep. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. The throw's coming from like 65, 70 feet away. It's yeah. like, dude, if that ball is like, looks like it's over your head, you got plenty of time to yeah. drop back. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, Biggest thing for me, get rid of the tie, please. Just axe it out of the that was. I don't, I don't want to see it in the NFL. Like that, that was the next thing I was going to get into. Very interesting there at the very end. So it looked like the Raiders for a second. We're playing for a tie. Oh yeah, and then I think so. and then the Chargers call the timeout, and then changes their play style. What do you think? The head coach for the Raiders said it that it was a discussion on the sideline. Just run out the clock, 
if the opportunity comes for us to win it, maybe we'll win it, but we're just going to run the ball. They weren't doing anything special. Mm -hmm. They converted a couple of first downs to kind of secure that the clock was going to run out. Yeah. And then they're just simple draw plays. I mean, there's nothing fancy going on there. And then the Chargers call a timeout. That leads the Raiders to believe if we don't convert on this third down, they're going to call timeout again and want and the ball. Try to, and try to get the ball. Back. And try to win. I, try to go I thought they were going to call it as soon as that was it. It was uh, second down, I think, right? Yeah. So well, second down or third down, whatever it was. But he <laughs> let the play clock like he let the time run down, and then he called the timeout with like time ten out. seconds left. Yeah. I was like, why wouldn't you call it as soon as the down was over? Exactly. And well, because now think, you kind of showed your hand. You, I, you panicked. I yeah, think because he, was, he they, was on the fence. They waited to see the alignment. Like they got lined, the Raiders got lined up and everything, and then called the timeout. I, that's what he. That's what Staley says. Is it was a, a defensive substitution. He he didn't like the formation. And then it's like, what the hell? And then he, he takes his outside linebacker out. Yeah. And so then a safety comes down to play inside the box. And that's your best defense? Yeah, come on, yeah. dude. That, that's a terrible excuse. You know you know the Raiders are going to run the ball. Yeah. Like, Everyone knew the yeah, Raiders. Josh Jacobs ball. had been ripping off, like, he ended up going over 100, but that OT, he ripped off, like, a 20 There was a few good runs that yeah. yeah. And it's like, dude, they're not going to throw the ball, mm-hmm. so why would it you was, switch to like, a better defense? It was, like, third and six, and they, they, they called timeout. I, I think, he, I think he, the Raiders he, were giving them the tie. And then the Chargers are like, oh, wait, we, we actually want to win this game. And yeah, they're like, like, fuck you guys, we'll win the game yeah. then. We're trying to throw you a bone. I, I think he I think he fucked up. He panicked. And, and, but, he I mean, that's not yeah. the only idiot move he made in that game. Well, I mean, he's... Fourth, he's, fourth and two inside your own 20? He's a riverboat guy. Like, he, he he's, takes chances like crazy. They're talking about... He's one, of those, he's one of those analytics guys where he just, like, if we look at the stats and the numbers, what are the possibilities of us, like, converting this? He blew the game that. earlier, like, was it, like... Late November against KC on a Thursday night, like there was like two fourth and goal situations inside the ten where he decided to go for it, didn't get it instead of taking the the two field goals out uh-huh. that would have gave him the win in regular time. Mm-hmm. Instead, uh-huh. went to OT and then KC wins it. And then KC won it. That's just like a leadership problem. I mean, he did well coaching at other places when he's on the defensive end of the ball, but I mean. He, now that he's the guy in charge, he's making kind of stupid decisions kind of, like this. I mean, that's how I play Madden. So. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he's just playing Madden. Hey, I, 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 this is I'm not Madden. judging him. Like, I, I, I do the same thing. I'll go, I'll go for it on fourth down. But I mean, you but go I mean, for fourth and two inside your own your, your own twenty. I don't know about inside my own twenty. But, but I mean, you're already losing. But I, I mean, if, that if, early in the game, if, you, if you're playing, if you're playing for the win, if, if say if the Chargers really legit are playing for the win. When they score that last touchdown, why not roll the dice and just go for two? two? I thought they were going to go for two. I thought they were going to go for you two. You had all the yeah. momentum. You were down 15. Yeah. You come back and tie it. Why not just win it there? Right. Exactly. You ended up losing anyways. Yeah. They, yeah, they should have just They should have just rolled the I, dice and gone for two. They I, still think, I still think the tie is in the back of their head. True. Knowing that that's, that's their safety thing. If we can mm-hmm. kind of duke it out a little bit in OT and kind of – see where we're at, and then we can fall back on the tie. And then out of nowhere, he's like, let's win the game. To go back onto the tie team, I want to get rid of it because I think Miami would have gotten in if it wasn't for the Steelers and the Lions and The Steelers tie. and the Lions tie. Because Miami yeah. had a bit better division record than the Steelers. Yeah, Miami because Miami also, finished 9-8, and eight, right? Yeah. 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 They also would have gotten in if you just, <laughs> would have just handled the Jaguars. <laughs> or the Falcons. Or beat the Jaguars. Yeah. Or, or the, the Raiders and, and the Raiders in overtime this year. Uh, but yeah, crazy game, man. Crazy, crazy outcome. Uh, let's take a look. At, let's go ahead and take a look at the standings in the playoffs. Uh, in the AFC, we got Tennessee, who's uh, the number one seed, who I think looks pretty dangerous, right? If, yeah. if they rest up a little bit and they get uh, they get Derrick Henry back, uh, I think watch out for them. Uh, Kansas City. What do you guys think on them? Quite, quite a year for Patrick Mahomes. They kind of just. That slow start there at the end, and then uh, came back were, to get one, the number two seed. One and three that yeah. finished twelve and five. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, they're, the, they're the two seed that I think is really a one seed. Yeah. So I, I think that they can go to Tennessee and win. Mm-hmm. That's that's my opinion. Uh, the Bills sitting at number three. Uh, they clinched the division. Finally, take the the division away from the Packs. What do you guys think? I don't know. I've said it Just, multiple times. I I think that they've underperformed this year. I, Give, the Patriots, given, given the Patriots the really, yeah, yeah. The Patriots really exposed them in their first matchup. Uh, so I don't know. I think that game itself is just a coin mm-hmm. flip. If they can get some kind of running game to help out Josh Allen, which I know their running game has been better the last couple of weeks, but yeah. if 
just something to help out Josh Allen where he doesn't have to run around the pocket the whole time. Right, yeah. That way it takes pressure off and he can just focus on diving it to Knox or to, mm-hmm. to Diggs, you know? Beasley, yeah. guys like Gabriel Davis. But we'll see. Yeah. I guess we'll see first round. We'll see. Um, the Ra- or the Bengals at number four, Raiders at number five, and Pats number six, and the Steelers at number seven. Uh, so interesting matchups, man. We got uh, <laughs> the Steelers versus the Chiefs next week. The Pats versus the Bills and the Raiders versus Cincinnati, which uh, the uh, I think the Raiders beat Cincinnati earlier this year, right? No, since he beat them. Or since he beat them, right? Yeah, it was that, that, over, that overtime game, right? Yeah, it was close. I yeah. know, but since he came back, like, yeah, something like that. Uh, let's look at the NFC. The NFC, we have uh, the Packers sitting at number one. Oh, the best uh, team in football. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to bet against them. Um, do you think they're going to make a run? Does it, does it look that way? Does it look... <sighs> I they all got a little Lambo. I think they got a chance. Especially, Aaron especially Rogers, as long as Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback, you have a chance. Yeah. Exactly. But that, that's what I think too. I mean, what happened last year? Tom Brady just Tom Brady comes in. Slinging. Tom Brady also threw three interceptions that game, and they still won. And they still won. Off of uh, what was it? Uh, Aaron that Jones. Was, that was the game yeah. where uh, they uh, they mismanaged that inside the goal line situation. Decided to kick. The where they decided to instead of touchdown. Instead of going to touchdown. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then try yeah, and then trying to pin them deep, and mm-hmm. then and then never see the ball again. Yeah, uh, Bucks at number two. Uh, what do you think the Bucks look like, man? Do you think uh, you think they can make another run? You think they can repeat? They got Tom Brady starting, then yeah, they can make another run. Uh, but they also don't have the weapons that they had last year. No AB. Uh, Chris Godwin's out. They're gonna have to go to Mike Evans. Dude, uh, Tom Brady is pulling no name dudes out of anywhere and. Throwing touchdowns still. Uh, Gronk had a great game the other day. Mike Evans had a great game. I, it, it, I think that he doesn't necessarily need superstars to win right that's now. That's true. He's made runs with like Chris Hogan. And, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Cowboys at number three. Big surprise this year. No. Or you, you were no. you were expected it. No, I, I, I think I told OC. What did we finish? Twelve and five. I said yeah. thirteen and four. That was that was the number. I didn't expect the Cardinals lost. No, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. The Ram, the Rams are number four. Cardinals number five. Niners six, and uh, the Eagles at number seven. Uh, next week we have the Eagles versus the Bucks, the Niners versus the Cowboys, and the Cardinals versus the Rams. Uh, any any particular game you guys are excited for? Cowboys Niners. I think that's going to be the. I think everybody's excited for Cowboys. I think that's going to be the best matchup out of all all the playoff games. The whole wild card. That's going to be the. Best I do want to see uh, Derek Carr finally play in the playoff game. Though. Being a bulldog and also it's his first it's his first time yeah, going to the playoffs because the last one he ankle broke his ankle or something like that and, and then they were they were on Christmas they were Eve. yeah they were good that year I think they were like sitting like at nine and one yeah. at that point yeah, like nine nine going in. So, yeah exactly and just fell apart now, the then, same year I think uh, Carson Wentz got hurt they got hurt the same day or the same weekend or back to back weekends or something. was it the same same year it was the worst thing to happen for the Raiders and the best thing to happen for the Eagles <laughs> yeah I think that was the same year twenty sixteen I think something like that yeah. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, the head coaching firings from uh, from this weekend. Uh, big news. Uh, well, I mean, not really big news, but uh, Chicago letting go of uh, Matt Nagy, finally. They right? Ryan Pace, right? They let go. Yeah, of yeah they let go of the GM too. What, um, what really surprised me about that is Matt Nagy set a winning record, thirty four and thirty one. And I honestly thought he was terrible. Well, that uh, what was it? What what year was it? Was his first first year the that they the double doink? They were like twelve and four, something like that. Like they ended up like they had a really good year, and then out of nowhere, yeah, they they, uh, downhill. they last year they snuck into the playoffs. Stunned. Yeah, they lost yeah, they the had that one game. Yeah, against the Saints. That was the the Nickelodeon game. Remember? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's where, what I remember. Where, uh, Jimmy Graham scored that touchdown, and then just kind of just the walked into the locker room. Yeah. yeah. That's what I asked uh, uh, German. The, the the Nickelodeon game this year is the Cowboys and the Niners. I asked him if he's going to watch the game on Nickelodeon. <laughs> he just might. You don't want to listen to Tony Romo. You no, that's Tony Romo, right? Um, is it on CBS or on Yeah, it's on CBS. It's on CBS. Oh, oh. It's on CBS yeah. yeah, Tony Romo so called Tony, Tony, Tony Romo oh. called in the Cowboy game. That's not just, biased. Just predicting every single play. Well, that's you got Troy Aikman on the other side. Oh, true. Two Cowboy <laughs> Two quarterbacks. Yeah. quarterbacks. So either way, unless you put it on NBC. Well, I was yeah. watching watching the game. It just reminded me how much Troy Aikman sucks at commentating. You don't think so? You know, I think Troy Aikman tries so hard to not be biased towards the Cowboys because he honestly like scolds the Cowboys 
every opportunity he gets. But what what got to me yesterday is like there was a the Niners were just like they ran like a triple screen. Like they would like they faked the screen one way, they faked the screen to the right, and then a Kittle like sneaked out like it was almost like an ad lib, you know, kind of route and Jimmy just threw it to him. And then Troy Aikman's like, oh yeah, we we used to run that back in the day all the time. You know, it's like shut up, dude. Like no you did. He's just trying hard to be like Tony Romo. Uh, and then what surprised me, um, uh, Dak Prescott broke the franchise record for the most touchdowns, right? Why did that surprise you? I, I, thought, uh, I thought Troy Aikman had more touchdowns than that no. in a season. No, Tony Romo had 36 and 32 before. Was, I was, was saying the Emmett, it was the Emmett show when Troy was there. It yeah. was a, he was just turning, yeah. around, turning around and handing Dude, the ball to Emmett Smith. The best player in the NFL, Emmett Smith in your backfield, what are you going to throw the ball for? Right. I mean, yeah. you had Michael Irvin, but I mean, your, best, your, your number one was Emmett Smith. Yeah. Give the ball yeah. to Emmett. Uh, but anyways, uh, that job in Chicago, interesting. Do you think, you know, big names being pulled to that? I mean, you got Justin Fields, at quarterback. Uh, I, don't guys. Think, I don't think it's going to, like, I think Brian Flores is, like, the number one option out there right now. And I don't think that. With that defense, not, that not defense appealing. is still pretty stout. You got Khalil Mack there. Yeah, Eddie Jackson. Eddie Eddie Jackson, Jackson. Jackson in safety. You got, was it, Rokon McMillan? Uh, Rokon, Rokon Smith. Smith. Rokon yeah, Rokon Smith. Smith. Georgia guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, I mean, they have some superstars on the defense. Justin Fields, you got a young quarterback. Um, Alec Robinson, I don't know if he's going to decide to stay. I depending think he on, leaves. You think he's, he's gone yeah, he either way? He got tagged last year, right? So he couldn't yeah, leave. Yeah, he couldn't leave. I yeah. would yeah. leave. Because oh. everyone thought he was going to leave. He's yeah, on, he's, he on, on, franchise he's on the decline of his career. I think he'd, he'd try and get out and go somewhere else. Yeah, I, I agree. Maybe go somewhere where they have Because the play. offense is rebuild, right? I mean, you got Justin Fields, and I'm assuming they're going to draft a bunch of offensive linemen this year because uh, their O line well, was who's, terrible. Who's, uh, who's their running back? They have Montgomery over there, right? Yeah. So I mean, they have weapons. They just they, they don't have, have the offensive line. line, and then just just putting it all together. And Matt yeah. Nagy, I mean, he goes to show how how terrible he is at uh, at game planning mm-hmm. and and preparing his quarterback for for a good uh, for a good offensive run. Um, the Vikings finally let go of uh, Mike Zimmer. After after eight seasons and their GM, uh, anything there? You guys? Uh, kind of surprised. A little surprised. He's got a winning record by a decent amount too. Seventy two and fifty six and one. Three playoff How appearances. How long was he there? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. yeah. Three three playoff appearances in eight years. NFC Championship game a couple years ago. Uh, with yeah. that uh, that freak play with yeah. uh, with the, and, with the, the one that stunned the uh, the Saints. The Saints. And, oh, and, okay. the, and, and they fired him. The yeah. Minneapolis Miracle? Exactly. I, I think if he had a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins, he could have done something in, in Minnesota. Honestly, that's pretty good for being in a division with uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. 72, 56, yeah. and 1. That's yeah. pretty good. Mm-hmm. I know he beat Rodgers a handful of times. So. Yeah. I, that one, That I mean, Brian Flores really surprised me, but Mike Zimmer getting fired kind of shocked me. It was surprising. Um, the Broncos, they're, they're looking for a new head coach. They're in the market. Yeah, the worst thing that happened to the Broncos was destroy the Cowboys because it was completely downhill after that. After that, right. <laughs> yeah, completely. And then uh, Drew Locke had to come in after, uh, after the injury to uh, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, who just has the, the biggest sleeper button probably on the planet Earth. Did you guys see him get knocked out earlier this year? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah when he, he tried to make that dive. He tried to dive yeah. and then just hits the ground and then lights out. It's like, oh, poor, poor guy, Teddy. dude. He's just, he oh, can he's never catch the break, dude. Uh, which sucks, because I, I really like Teddy Bridgewater. But you, you have him getting replaced next year, don't you? Yeah, by the by probably the best quarterback in the league right now, Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. That's that's who I picked. Uh, that's where I picked Aaron Rodgers going to next year, to Denver. Denver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they have, they have weapons. They have Melvin Gordon, who's going to come back next year. They have uh, Jerry Judy. And then on the other side, they have Patrick Sertan on the defense. They got Noah Fant. Noah Fant. And mm-hmm. then they have Bradley Chubb. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he, can really, he can really pull guys there. I mean, look what he did in Green Bay this past couple years. So I really think, I really think that's going to be a good landing spot for him. Um, he's getting closer to the West Coast, so maybe that's what he wants. He's still playing in the cold weather, though. A little bit better than Wisconsin. An interesting uh, point of emphasis. I was watching... I forgot what show, but they're talking about how the Packers have the ability to tag Devontae Adams this offseason. Mm. So does that play into what Aaron wants until to do? Aaron what Aaron does? Because Aaron just has been hyping him up on the media yeah. circuit the past couple weeks, talking about how he's the best player he's ever played with. So I'm just like, 
Well, I'll tell you what, if Devontae really Adams is not there, then then Aaron Rodgers is. Oh, yeah, I know he's. Oh gone. no, yeah, yeah, he's gone. But like, do you think they tag him and like force that, Aaron that forces to, Aaron, stay? Aaron to stay? I think that's the best bet, right? I mean, who wants to lose and then you the MVP? Get, he, is his contract up? Yeah, after this they're both. Yeah, they're both are. Both, both of them. But they, but they can only tag one then, right? Mm-hmm. Well, no, I think Aaron Rodgers' contract isn't up, but I think uh, he wants. Oh out. no, yeah, but he wants out. Well, they offered him the cro- the contract extension. I, I thought that I, thought, I thought he was just signed to the end of this year. I, I thought he was done. We gotta look into it. I, I, I could be wrong, but yeah. I know for sure Devonte Adams is an unrestricted free agent after this year. Mm-hmm. But it'll be interesting. I think even if they do tag Devonte, I think Rodgers is still out. I don't think that's enough to to keep him there. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I don't think, think Devontae I think wants to stay either. I think it's just bigger than just yeah, one player. I think he wants out too. Yeah, especially if Aaron's not there. He's going to Vegas, man. I don't think anyone wants to catch. I think that that whole Jordan. that whole uh, trading up to to grab Jordan Love. I think it's just really come back, in the ass. come back to bit him in the ass because I think uh, the fact that they panicked so hard last year when when Rodgers wanted out just goes to show that Jordan Love is not the guy mm-hmm. that they have zero faith in him. So do I mean. Well, I guess you, you figure that out after Aaron either leaves. I, feel, I feel bad for the kid. They, they put him in a, in a really they, tough really spot. really tough situation. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't do, he doesn't deserve any well, of it. What was the He's mindset a, there? Like, kind of do what they did with Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre? But the thing he, is, he wasn't going to go in the first round. But, yeah, he wasn't going to go in the first round. Aaron Rodgers was a member. They were still mm-hmm. – he was still a candidate for, for the oh, first yeah. overall pick at the time. And then at the time, Brett Favre was already playing like shit. Mm-hmm. Like they, they were already losing big games due to to Brett Favre's uh, mentality or the way he was playing. Um, it's different. Aaron Rodgers wasn't playing like shit at the time. Like I mean, I think he what he broke his collarbone the year before, and then he had an okay year, uh, and then goes to the NFC Championship game. MVP last year, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. the MVP last year. Well, even the year before, he went to the NFC Championship game. Oh yeah, he's in against yeah. the Niners. And against the Niners, and then that's when out. they got yeah they got <laughs> ran all over. Uh, but then it was the year after that they that he won the MVP, he's and then he's probably going to win it again this year. Again yeah, this exactly. Year. If he doesn't, it's all political. Unless you're that guy, that, that, the, the, the writer that came the out. Bum. That's a that's a that was another <laughs> thing bum. I wanted to talk about. Um, it was yeah, where he's just like, well, what do you think about him? And he's just like, because the dude's a bum. The Aaron Rodgers, the dude's a bum. I love it. I love how blunt he is. It's like, it dude, too. like if you have a vote, vote for the. I get it. Like you have there your, was the distractions going off. The but you got to be stuff. able to separate the the play on the field from whatever his stance is. This is not a humanitarian no, award. This is it's the most valuable. How did he play player. on the field and vote for that? Yeah. It doesn't matter what he did or what mm-hmm. happened. Like yeah, sure, people were mad about it. Everyone has their opinions, but you're voting for the best player overall. Mm-hmm. Vote for that. Yeah. Not because of whatever decision he made, and that's going to affect you or you're mad about it. So. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, and I think a lot has to do with depending on who the Bucks hire or <coughs> who uh, the Broncos uh, decide to hire. Uh, yeah. That's going to be very mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, are you going to bring in a guy who's kind of just going to let him do his thing, or are you going to bring a guy like uh, like Pete Carroll in, you know, who's going to want to – Control. Or or maybe or maybe uh, some offensive coordinator out there that's uh, that's been looking for a head coaching job. You know who knows? Because I don't think the, I don't think the Broncos need a, a complete full rebuild. I think they just need guys to bring in uh, to kind of just put the pieces all mm-hmm. together. Uh, that's going to be in- very interesting there for the Broncos. Uh, and then the biggest one that uh, one of the biggest reasons why OC's here. Yeah. Uh, Brian Forlett. Brian For- <laughs> Flores. <laughs> Brian oh, Mexican Flores. Mexican audio. Yeah. He's out the door, man. After only three seasons, uh, his first year he was what? What was his Five record? Eleven. Second year. Ten and six. Ten and, six. and then this year. Nine and eight. And then you're out. Out the door. Very interesting. Uh, OC, what uh, what are your thoughts on that? Go ahead, man. I just I don't understand. Oh, by the way, OC's a, a Dolphins fan. <laughs> yeah, I just he refused fan. to wear his Dolphin gear today. <laughs> his man was playing tonight. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, no, this has no retaliation into Ross. Yeah, and former. Was, yeah, former. Uh, Miami Dolphin head coach Nick Saban, just so you know. Oh, and that's right, <laughs> right? True, true. I just, like, I woke up, this guy had texted me, and I was already, like, I scrolled through Twitter, and I'm just like, this is a joke. Like, you just got, Brian Flores just went back-to-back winning seasons. Granted, he didn't make the playoffs, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it was uh, whatever, but he won 10 games one year, nine games the next. 
you beat Belichick twice this year. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Like you beat Belichick. Like, like not a lot of people can do that. Right. And then overall, he was four and two against them. But it it was just like, like the whole fan base was just completely livid about the situation. Mm -hmm. Like on my way to work, I just turned in to um, Miami Sports Radio, and people were just going off. Mm -hmm. And I was I felt the same way. I'm like, how do you fire a guy that? that basically had the first back-to-back winning seasons in like about 15, 20 years. Like why? Like this franchise is a revolving door with head coaches every three years, every three years. Like it was Brian Flores three years, Adam Gase had three years before this, and it was Joe Philbin, Tony Sperano, Cam Cameron. It's just like, it just, it's a cycle. And at some point, and I heard a great comment today, maybe it's not the head coaches, maybe it's the owner. Because mm-hmm. he's the sixth head coach, right? Yeah. In and 13 he, years? He took over, yeah, 12 years, 12 seasons, 12, 13 seasons. And now I'm starting to think, yeah, it, it, it might be Steven so Ross. The front office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so because office, it's like yeah. at some point, like you finally had a stable coach. You had somebody that reports were might have not gotten along with everybody. But guess what? He was winning games. Like, yeah. Granted, he started 1-7 and seven this year, but he won seven straight. And then he they lost against Tennessee, but then they finished out – and got the winning record at nine and eight, and it's just he he draft. The only thing that I will say is like the guy drafted an immense amount of defensive players aside from Jalen Waddle, but I mean he the offense really didn't do much. But he was coaching the shit out of the defense. Like yeah, like people can say whatever they want. He's a hell of a defensive coach. Oh, yeah. Like he the and we knew that when he was coming in. That, it just sounds like it became personal behind the scenes, like based off of everything that I've heard today, like whether it was insiders or just hard nosed fans that that like followed the team immensely. It everything was the same. Like it, there had to, there was some kind of like stricken relationship behind closed doors that we didn't see, or because there was players on social media for the Dolphins. A lot of them were like upset, like man, mm-hmm. Beeflo was a good coach, but there was also players that were like. Hey, we gotta keep moving, you know. Yeah. Like so, you got. What, little, uh, little what, what specifically did you hear from like the insiders? That that the relationship was stricken between uh, mm-hmm. Tua and um, Flores. Like that, like they were pissed off. The owner was pissed off about the situation that was at hand. Was he not liking like the development of Flores or or uh, I think uh, it was Tua or just the offensive staff that he couldn't develop? Like we have probably the worst O line of the league. Yeah. Um, we went through offensive coordinators every year, so I was like, "But it's like, what are you gonna do at that point? Like, right. you got a rookie quarterback mm-hmm. last year with Tua. You bring in Chan Gailey, that didn't work out, and then you have co-offensive coordinators this year, and that worked yeah. kind of good when they were winning, but when they were struggling, granted, Tua was out a couple of weeks. But well, that was a rough start, one and seven yeah. to start off the. To start well, they start the off, they beat, they go into New England and beat the Patriots, start yeah. off one and zero, uh-huh. and then they just lose seven <laughs> straight, and you're losing to teams like the Falcons, the Jags, and it's just yeah, like, it damn. wasn't pretty. It was not, but then they turned mm-hmm. it around, you know. That's. Yeah. But, uh, We'll see what I don't happens. Know, big, big, big shoes, I think, to fill in Miami. And I think Brian Flores is going to be like the number one option. Very, right now, b- very like interesting. Coach. They went very uh, defensive heavy with that hire, Brian Flores, and then I mean, he turned that organization around because what Mac or uh, what Adam Gase left behind was terrible. Yeah, what that, it, that that organization was in shambles uh, yeah. when he got there, and I really think I really do think he was he he. Implemented kind of that Patriots mentality. He, was like, he came in. He's we're gonna take care of business. Yeah, it's if even if you get your feelings hurt, I don't give a fuck. We're gonna take care of business. And that's why, granted, like Joy Taylor's talking about it. Not everyone is gonna get along in the building. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to learn to work with people that you don't like. And that's everywhere. That's yes, everywhere. And, and, and that's what business you go to. And yeah. that's what everybody was. Or that's what. So Aaron, Aaron, Rod- Aaron Rodgers is doing that right now. Right? Yes, he hates his coach. Thirteen and three. Doing but I guess when, when the owner gets his feelings hurt, you know, the owner calls the shots. Calls he, a big, I mean, he's, he's a big, the one yeah. signing the check, so he can do whatever he wants. That's true. Um, very interesting. It, it almost looks like now they're gonna, probably going to go offensive heavy, maybe to try the development of Tua. That's another thing that I was going to bring up. The three of the guys that got fired today, all defensive guys. Dick yeah. Fangio, Mike Zimmer, B-Flow. 
all defensive they, every, that, And that's what we were talking about last week, too, is everybody's looking for the Kyle Shanahan, the Sean McVay, the Matt LaFleur. Everyone wants the, the, floor, everyone wants the, the young, nice, shiny the young, toy. Yeah, yeah, the young that's offensive coordinator. Taylor Moore was the first one to interview, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's the, he was the first guy that you know a, a team was looking at as a head coach, another young offensive coordinator. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to see who they hire or who they start to interview. Um, who's uh, the Chiefs offensive coordinator? The enemy. The enemy. I, I feel like that's going to be the perfect fit for him there in Miami. They could. Try to develop. A lot of people are calling for uh, the GM's head, too, in Miami. In Miami. Because yeah. he's the one that I mean, helped yeah. pick players. So everyone yeah. was like, how does, mm-hmm. how does B-Flow get fired and not Chris Greer? But it's very interesting. Uh, just the product on the field wasn't terrible. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No. It wasn't like they were like it was you know getting blown out every single week. No, I know that, yeah, they were competitive in games. It was you know and especially you know, going back to last year when you had the two the two quarterback system. I feel like they did they did pretty decent. They finished the year ten and six. The I mean, well, I mean, what else are you supposed to do as a head coach? I think you look at it at. The, when you assess a head coach's job in two ways. One, did you have a losing season? Even but and if you did, did you underperform? So yes, maybe you did have a losing season, but we didn't expect you to have a winning season. Yeah. So did you meet the criteria in the losing season? Mm-hmm. So I, I I think I was telling you earlier, when when the, the Dolphins went ten and six last year, if they went, you know, seven and, and nine or I'm not. I'm not like shocked. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, that's that's right on par. If if they would have won twelve games, I would yeah. I wouldn't have been too shocked. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's just kind of mind blowing to me. I I don't think he did that bad to get fired. Wow, things like that. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was completely surprising. I was completely shocked. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see where they go from here, uh, because that's another organization too. I think a lot of the pieces are there. Well, that's the thing that frustrates me, that or a lot of the fan base too, because you felt you had another winning season, and you go, all right, we're finally mm-hmm. building some momentum. Granted, the offense isn't great, but the defense mm-hmm. kept you in game, right. you know, yeah. and you're winning games. Mm-hmm. You you won, you had a winning season. Mm-hmm. But the thing that that like makes you doubt everything is like you fire your coach, and you're like, no, nah, now another rebuild. Like, how this is gonna take how long? Where mm-hmm. I, where I started where I started this with Miami where I started kind of seeing like a little bit of the red flags is when they cut Van Noy earlier this year. Yeah. During the summer, and I thought right before the season, he started. was a leader of your defense. He was playing really well the year before. You know, he was the guy who was bringing it all together. He was your captain. He played for you in New England, and then you cut him, and then you claim it's for um, for financial reasons, right? Or, or yeah, trying, that's pretty trying much to create some space. They said it was. Um, that's when I kind of started to see. I was like, okay, what's going on down there? And of course, they pop, they went. They went one and seven for a reason. Mm-hmm. I get, I, I get that, you know, and and a lot of their a lot of the reason was because their offense wasn't performing. But the, I mean, the defense was still solid. Even the defense was underperforming. Yeah, they were giving the points. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you know, and then they they turned it around. Uh, Tua came back from his injury, started winning some games, and then they kind of just fizzled out there at the end of the year. Um, I don't know, man. I think a, a lot of it might be it might be ego, uh, and I think a lot a big part of it is trust. And I think it's just they didn't trust the the decision of uh, drafting Tua. They still don't trust Tua. There's people inside those doors that don't trust it. They don't trust. Or doubting it. They're doubting it. And I think there was just too much doubt. And when you have too much doubt going on in an organization, it's just it's well, it's hard to get people that. And then to he's buy always going to be compared to Herbert because he was the because fifth pick. Because drafted at the same the size. Yeah. And people like though like you talking about Herbert <clears throat> was great last night and everything. They finished with the same record. They're yeah. both nine and eight. Both mm-hmm. nine and eight. Mm-hmm. But granted, like Herbert has all the tools, you know. Yeah. And it's not all on him because, like you said, terrible offense. Well, line play. I mean, guys are dropping. The passes. Chargers, the Chargers head coach got fired last year. Yeah. Even even after that, they were in some close games too. Uh, Anthony Lynn. Yeah, who got let go today got, by Dan Campbell. Exactly. He was yeah. offensive he was coordinator. Was coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, very interesting, man. Um, Let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, let's go into next week's picks. Uh, who you got between the Steelers and Chiefs? Drew. Sure. Chiefs. I, I do think though that if there's any like Cinderella story out there, it would be Steelers being the Chiefs. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I think Big Ben's really the only guy 
even in year who knows how many after yeah. how many passes, I think he could do it. I I, um, I don't see it likely happening, but I got I got Chiefs. Chiefs, I see. Yeah, just based off of their last match, I'm looking at like the spread uh, and points. Minus like twelve and a half. Twelve and a half points. That's a ton of points in yeah. But I mean, yeah. the most in, in the playoffs so but, far. What the Chiefs beat them by like. Well, it was thirty, but I think they, the same, the Steelers made it like a seventeen point game late. It was like late, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the Chiefs. I don't think. I mean, Mike Tomlin though, he might pull something out of his you know, hat. Know. Yeah, he's, he's never had a losing season, so you know. And he's especially, I mean, right now the way T.J. Watt's playing, he's probably yeah. gonna end up winning that defensive player of the year. Yeah. So that's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna go Chiefs too. So, so you're going with Chiefs, OC? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Pats and Bills. That one's interesting. What do you got? Oh, I got I got Bills. Yeah, Bills. I'm gonna go with the Pats. I'm just gonna go just based on on experience in the playoffs. I think uh, Bill Belichick. Um, I know last time he threw it, he uh, Josh Allen threw it all over them. Uh, but I think he's gonna stab out that defense. He's gonna figure things out. He's gonna run the ball again against them. Uh, so we'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, Raiders in Cincinnati. You got. I got I got Bengals. Bengals? Yeah, because I don't think uh, I think offensively the Raiders will be okay. Defensively, I don't I don't. Jamar Chase is gonna just destroy them. Yeah, those DBs yeah, struggled they, last they night. Don't have DBs. You? Let's see. I'm gonna ride the hot wave and just. Are you gonna go? Yeah. Are you gonna go like, there's, always, there's always a dog that wins every week, every That's true. wild card weekend. So mm-hmm. this is my dog, right? Here. That's your dog. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Cincinnati, and I think just. Uh, just because they're the better team overall. Um, the Raiders kind of just sneaked in. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with Cincinnati and Joe Burrow. Uh, Eagles and Bucks, who you got? Uh, Bucks. Bucks. I think it turns out to be another Tom Brady game. Close after three quarters, and then Tom Brady says, nah. Yeah. Uh, OC? Bucks, but I think the Eagles make it a lot closer mm-hmm. just because I think they're they cover gonna, the spread? Yeah, I think just because the way they've been running the ball. Mm-hmm. So I think they're just gonna try to. Yeah, they kind of figured they the kind clock. of uh, figured out a key to get uh, Jalen Hurts going. Yeah, so yeah. I think is Levante David still out for the Bucks? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So then, I think they're just gonna run the ball. I mean, granted, they still have uh, yeah, their, that D line. That D line. Yeah, they got Sue and, and uh, uh, what was that the, the D line? Via or something. Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. Via Vea, yeah. You know? They just signed him uh, to an extension yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. it's like. So they're gonna run outside the tackles because they're, they're gonna they're have not to try to run outside. Yeah, outside. So. Uh, yeah, very interesting game. I'm gonna go Bucks to uh, Cardinals Rams. Who you got? The Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah, uh, that's that's my upset pick for for this upcoming weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Matthew Stafford looks like Detroit Matthew Stafford the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. He he does not look like what we saw in the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, the big bright spot on that offense is Cooper Cup. Is doing Cooper Cup things. Yeah. Just throw it somewhere down there, and he'll catch it. He'll find a way he to had score. Sick touchdown in the corner. That over the shoulder. Over the shoulder. Yeah. The shoulder. yeah. I didn't think it was him. With a with the world's smallest toe touch. Oh, yeah. That was nice. No, yeah, he's a dog. Um, and uh, honestly, the the Rams defense has kind of been their backbone the last few years, mm-hmm. and they got exploited by Jimmy G. So I think uh, Kyler Murray will do a better job at uh, exploiting that defense more. Uh, I'll see. I'll take the Rams just because. I don't trust Kyler in big games. Whenever the lights are the brightest, you've seen it a couple, was it like three Monday nights ago? Yeah. They had the Rams at home, they had all the momentum, and just, Kyler just stuck it up. Yeah. So I just think like when they have primetime games, you see it against the Colts, mm-hmm. you let Carson Wentz outshine him. So yeah. I don't trust Kyler. He went to Jerry World. Yeah, true. But it wasn't on primetime. That's the thing. It was a one o'clock game. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's why um, I'm picking. The everything's prime time in Dallas, though. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Rams on that one too, and I think it's just uh, the Cardinals' offense has been struggling for the past couple weeks. Um, I think J- them getting JJ Watt back is not gonna make that big of a that big of a difference. Uh, he hasn't played all year. He's he even when he was healthy, he didn't do much over there. Uh, other than that leadership role that he had, um, and then Kyle Murray, I think their offense is just struggling. I mean, they've been running these like these little screens here and there. They really didn't look like a like a big time play offense where they can get, really get the ball down the field, especially uh, with the Cab- or with um, with the Rams the way they're playing too. I mean, I know they didn't play all that great against the Niners, 
but I think, like OC said, once you get scraped up one week, you come back and you don't get embarrassed again. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I'm going to think uh, I'm going to take the Rams on that one. Uh, the Cowboys and the Cowboys. Niners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Hold on for the camera. Obviously, you know who the picks are. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know the picks are. Well, yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Niners, uh, and then everybody everybody picks their their dog in the playoffs, and I think the Niners uh, represent that pretty well. They're kind of sneaked in into the playoffs uh, with just running the ball and playing great defense, and I think that that sucks playing against in January and February. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go the Niners on that. Oh, see. Wait yeah. for it, world. Here comes a shocker. Oh, it's a shocker. I'm taking San Francisco. I'm not, hey. I'm not picking Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot get me to pick Dallas. And uh, just for the same fact, I mean, I think, I mean, it's going to come down, hopefully, to the last possession, but. Yeah. Like you said, running the ball on great defense. Yeah. But, like, can you stop all the weapons that Dallas has? Can you stop. Uh, that's that's the only thing that worries me is. Can uh, you stop Lamb? Damn. Dak the, has the, man, the man to man situations uh, do worry me a little bit with uh, yeah. the weapons that the Cowboys have and the way I mean, we, we lost our third receiver, and Cedric Wilson came up and, like, mm -hmm. you guys really don't need Michael uh, Gallo because I'm here now. And he had two touchdowns, like 130 yards. Yeah. It's going to be a fun game. I think that's going to be the, the most anticipated game of the Dak's week. That's good in the playoffs, man. He's not good against good teams yeah. during the regular season. When he gets in the playoffs, he's not too bad. Yeah. So, uh, you want to put a bottle on it? A bottle? Yeah. I'll put a bottle on that. Right? Okay. Straight up, right? Yeah, straight up. Okay. What, kind of, what kind of bottle do you want? <laughs> you already know what I want. Yeah, you want Henny. Yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Shocker, right? I, I got to stop drinking tequila, so I'm going to... You can get a nice I, bottle. Dude, I'll go, I'll go Henny too. You want to go, 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 go Henny? I'll do a bottle Henny. Hey, I'm, so, I'm starting to turn them. I'm starting to, I'm starting to, I'm starting to get them. To no, dude, I just had too much tequila recently. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta quit with the tequila. No, yeah, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun uh, playoff wild card. Uh, the Niner, the Niner Cowboys game. That one's gonna be fun. Really looking forward to that one. Um, you guys got anything else you want to add? I think we're about done. I think that kind of. Yeah. I hope somehow Georgia comes back, but I don't think that they will. No, yeah, we're still it's what, defense second quarter. Right now. Yeah, it's six it's to nine. Not so very, it's not a very entertaining we game. Did, we, we didn't miss much. No, no. Uh, but yeah, that that about wraps it up, guys. Uh, thanks, thank you guys for you guys watching on YouTube. Uh, you guys consider liking and subscribing. Uh, we really like doing this, and we really want to keep doing it. Uh, but we're only going to keep doing it if uh, if the views start coming in and, and the subscribers start piling up. Um, even even I don't know. We might just keep doing it, even if nobody watches, because this is kind of fun. Uh, I'll watch it. Yeah, for those of you guys listening, uh, it took them like a whole two weeks to watch our first one. Then it yeah, took them forever. <laughs> All right, back to it. Uh, for those uh, listening on everything else, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we'll catch you guys all next week. All right, bye all right. everybody. See you. See you guys. You're good. I think I fucking tore my ACL in the middle. We of have that. Jess here. Oh, this is <laughs> Yeah, we ended up doing another, another hour. I told you it was going to be long. Yeah. I said once OC said he wants to come and rant, I said, right. okay, it's going to be a long one. No, that was only like five minutes. I had gotten No, that was cool, though. That, that was, was a good. good one.